What's going on, everybody? Matt Souders, part of the Catch Podcast. I'm going to talk about my boat a little bit, just give a quick rundown. Um, so we'll start right at the front. Well, we'll start before that. I have a bona fide RVR 119. This is my main boat. It's become my river and lake boat. Um, it's kind of replaced the P127 because it can do just about everything. Uh, but starting at the front, I typically have an anchor here that goes back routed inside to my anchor wizard on the side there. Um, I'm waiting for the mini to come out because that can be kind of a pain to turn. So once that comes out, the anchor will get used a lot more. But right here at the front, I have a 50 amp hour, 20 or 50, yeah, 50 amp hour, 24 volt BioNO lithium ion battery. That's plugged to a Marinco plug here in the front and the wires are ran the, all the way to the back to where my Newport uh, NK180 is set up. Um, we just got off the river, so this is pretty much exactly how I have it set. Uh, I have a net, which is just a net I got off Amazon. It's got nylon netting, so hooks and stuff. Don't want to get stuck in it too much. I still have it happen all the time because that's just my luck, and it is what it is. But I took a piece of inch PVC, threw it up on top of this, and then covered it with Gorilla Tape, which has been going good for like two years now, just to make it a little bit longer so I can kind of reach. Um, it is starting to wear out, though, slowly but surely. Uh, right here, I typically have a Garmin 73 SV for a fish finder. This year I found I, pro I haven't really been using a fish finder at all. So it just kind of doesn't go on the boat anymore. I've got the transducer wired to the bottom um, and then it wires in through here. It's actually connected to the bottom through that with some marine putty inside. Um, one of the newest things, something I'm really excited about is this quad lock uh, phone mount. So I had a Yak Gadget mount on here for the longest time. Works awesome. Loved it. But with doing more video and stuff, I'm, I'm running out of battery too quick. So this phone, the case quad lock cells, put it on your phone and then you just pull this right back. You can see it kind of moving and it clamps in there and locks in. You cannot get that undone. Even if you try to break it, you would break this first. And this is a wireless charger that runs down and I have it routed to here which then runs back to the controller from quad lock. They also sell this um, that goes to a 20 amp hour, 12 volt battery that I used to use my fish finder. Haven't been using it, but you just turn this bad boy on and I have power all day. We were out for, I want to say 9, 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, five hours today. And I'm still at hundred percent charge. The battery still going. It could charge some more, but you have on, off in the center and then auto on the other side so if it needs charging it will but that just goes right to there tucks away nice and neatly behind the seat and you don't even know it's really there um coming in i've got my catch board right here which is full of water but it has a little nook i don't know you probably won't be able to see it but that's okay it has a little nook right here underneath the seat for where the catch board goes so you just take the nose of it you can put it there and it'll lay nice and flat right there. Or when you're using it, the RVR has the built-in catch board holder. I don't typically put that there unless I'm measuring a fish for the fact that I like to stand when I fish. So it kind of lives underneath there until I catch a fish that I want to measure. Which like today, didn't get one. I had one, lost it. Really upsetting, but that's for another time. Um, I've got a kayak cushion. This is the one of the biggest upgrades that you can do to your boat for not that expensive. The Bonafide RVR seat is comfortable, but I've got back problems in the back or in my lower back, so I just want a little bit more cushion. So getting this right on there, it's in small mouth pattern because you know we love the bronze fish. And you just put it on there, it lives on the boat. I don't think it's been off since I got it. Uh, shout out to him because he hooked me up with this at the Columbus Expo. So thank you, sir. Uh, underneath, this is the new Bonafide RVR underneath storage for the RVR. Uh, it can hold four 3,500 boxes, or if you have the thins, you could probably get four 3,700 boxes because it is long enough. I've kind of narrowed my tackle down. So I'm going with four 3,600s. I only got three today. The other one's at home because I had to order it because no one ever has them in stock. So I had ordered it, but I'll have four under there. There's terminal. Um, so I've got a terminal box that's just full of hard baits. So I've got some crank baits. I've got some poppers. I got a whopper plopper. And then I got a bunch, almost all of this other than a couple of the poppers are from the dark horse boxes. Shout out to them. Uh, fantastic box. You'll see a review me and Brad are going to do on it, but 
fantastic. And then on this side, like I said, I've got, this is the new 3600 jig box. So just like 3700, I have all my jigs in here, some chatter baits, um, some football jigs, some jig, ma they're all jig masters, and then some jig masters, finesse jigs, my favorite jig, and I've got a couple hair jigs from the dark horse boxes. And then the new 3600 terminal box. This is just something to look at. Look how organized that is. Got all my EWG Ned heads. I've got my Blue Rock stupid tube heads. I've got some ball heads, some VMC rugby heads, some shaky heads, all of my Jig Masters uh, sled heads for my big Joshies, and then an assortment of EWG hooks. And that just looks, I mean, it's, it's super organized. It's nice to look at and nothing's gonna move around and kind of get jostled on you. Uh, I throw my water bottle right under here. A lot of guys will put stuff on the tracks. I don't want to take up any track space because I usually take it all up anyway. So water bottle just fits right there. I will be getting some seat risers. 3D Yak, I believe, makes them, or he's getting ready to make them, but it's going to raise the seat another three inches. So it just gives me more room underneath um, to kind of work with. Newport controller right here. I've got this from Brad Hicks, um, his actually recommendation. But I just have it on with Velcro, so it comes off and on real easy. These, when you put the screws in the back, can actually sometimes kind of, you put the screws in too much, you can't get full 100%. So the Velcro works great. It doesn't come off. It's waterproof. It's awesome. Uh, Bending Branches Angler Pro, the best paddle you can get, in my opinion. I've had three of them. I've got the copperhead. I've got the green one. I've got the blue one. Um, they're fantastic. They look good. They're super strong. I've beat many a hook out of a tree that I've got stuck in, pushed off the bank, pushed into rocks, still holding up great. Um, Right here, this is a Corso Outdoor tie, uh, which goes to my anti-reverse line for the Newport. So with reverse, it is a free-floating motor, so it can pop up when you hit something, which believe me, I've hit plenty of stuff. Uh, but when you pull that, it'll actually engage the reverse so it can't pop up. So I've got that routed right through there that goes back to underneath my sidekick and then to a Yak Gadget rod stager. I just don't have the other one up front right now. Uh, back here, since it's pointing out and I've already talked about it, the bonafide sidekicks. These tracks in the back are made to put this on there so I can actually pop some wheels in. It makes transport way easier. And you know, you can really do everything by yourself, especially with a trailer, pop the wheels in, pop it off, and you're gone. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Back of the seat, I got the bonafide sideline bag. So these came out earlier this year. Um, I've got some pliers here on a rogue tether, and then it's just full of stuff. I got some leader line there. And here I've got a bunch of assorted Nico plastics. This is pretty much all my Ned Rig stuff and then a couple of bags of flukes, stuff I use the most. And then I've got some uh, Nico crawls and then more trailers. So the critter or chigger crawl and then the uh, rattling chunk, which this is like one of my favorite jig trailers to throw. I'm not a huge fan of Guggen for everything else, but I tell you what, the rattles in this, I don't know what it is, put it on the back of a jig and they work. Or, and sometimes I'll put my water bottle over here. Usually there's bait fuel or something in there. Moving back, here's where the battery sits. This is actually made for a Torquedo battery. But with using the Newport, I have the 24 amp up front. So I put the 12 volt here that charges my phone. And then we'll also be charging a GoPro that I'll have up here in the back. The joy of that under seat storage, it opens up my tank well real well. So I just have a, a Bass Mafia plastics bag full of various plastics. Just tons of different stuff. I mean, I've got, let me see, I've got a, a, a Citizen in there, some Z-Man stuff, some Six Cent stuff, all my JDM stuff, some more power bait stuff, and it just fits and sits right there. So it's it's great to be able to open this up because I really don't have to worry about anything being back here. It's just nice to have it open with that under seat bag. Uh, Newport NK180, I already talked about, it's on the Bonafide RVR motor mount. You do have to purchase this if you're going to put a stern mount in motor. Not a huge deal, it basically just gives it to where you have your two holes up front and your two holes in the rear. And then I have these ran internally through the boat for my foot controls. My anchor line runs up that side and it's to a Marine Co uh, plug as well. And then you can kind of see over here, the trailer's a little bit in the way, but we'll work with it. Um, I've got the Yak Gadget rod stagers. Just like the kayak cushion, this is one of the easiest, cheapest, and best upgrades you can do for your kayak, especially on the river. We were out with my buddy James today and his uh, rods kind of stick straight up so when we were going through some trees and stuff he was having to move around and couldn't really get under the trees and get to those spots and had to make some harder casts 
With this, all my rods are completely flat. They're easy to get to. I've got five rods on here right now. It's only technically quote unquote designed for three or two if you have a paddle. But I put five rods on here, put a bungee strap on so it keeps them uh, solid while I'm going through some riffles or some any faster moving water or something I'm worried about or when I'm transporting. And it's easy, it works so well. And it's just, it's, it's a, a given to put for any kayak, whether you're on the lake, if you're on you know, the river, it just keeps you from being a wedding sail or getting other stuff. And then last but not least, like I said, the anchor line comes up through here. It goes to a, this is a Yak Attack eyelet mount and then to a Yak Attack cleat. Um, I'm switching this out with the Corso. I don't love this spot because it's kind of hard with the rod, so I'm probably gonna move this, but it works for now, holds the motor up when I'm traveling or when I'm, you know, in the river and going through some rough spots. But yeah, that's the boat. If you guys have any questions, please reach out, especially if you have RVRs and you're kind of curious how to set some stuff up. I've usually had everything in every spot and uh, that's it. Tight lines, go out and catch them.